I hope you brought your appetite. We're going on a food tour of Harlem, visiting three iconic locations with someone born and raised in Harlem. Get ready to get hungry. You guys are all in for a treat. Today's guest host is making his second appearance on the channel. Born and raised here in Harlem, also one of my best friends. Let's meet Evan. What's up members of the Mario? This is your guest host Evan coming to you straight from Harlem. Can't wait to take you around to some of the places that I think that you'll enjoy while you're here on a trip to New York City. All right Evan, we are at Moe's Burgers right now. You've been talking up this spot for a long time. Why'd you choose it? When you come to Moe's Burgers, and it's just like what we were talking about at Amy Roots in our last video, it's it's just a really good community feel that you end up with. It's a nice charbroiled burger, fresh off the grill, and honestly, like I'm sure all your viewers will agree that there's nothing like a fresh hamburger with some cheese that just kind of melts away in your mouth so guys right now we're in front of Victor's barbershop uh, Moe's Burgers is really famous because Mo owns the barbershop and started this whole thing as a part of feeding the community and like really making sure that this is something that the locals have access to can I grab two small cheeseburgers and two small um, what do you want to do half and half or what it is half and half uh, two, two small half and half as well You always get something to eat, man. Oh, 100%. Little windows are always open. <laughs> Especially you go to the bodega. That's you right, know, always slap open. Slap it down. Guys, I have to say, I smelled Moe's like a half block away. That smell of burgers grilling, unbelievable, really. Yo, you guys are in for a treat right now. Honestly, it's a pretty solid burger. Like, literally, solid. Like, I know a lot of times when you go to places and you get burgers, a lot of breading, a lot of filler in there, and you don't really get that much meat. This is just a really solid beef burger that comes fresh off the grill. Like, there's nothing more you can ask for. All right, let's see what the hype's all about. Moe's Burger, first time trying it for me. This tastes to me like you just got it off the grill at a backyard barbecue. And I love the social vibe over there. People just chiming in, telling their stories about eating at Moe's. This is a really solid burger and a great type of food you could just get on the go if you're exploring Harlem anyway. I mean, we're off to a really good start to this video. The one thing to remember is right now when you come to Moe's Burgers, like you can get the small for $2 and it, that's important because he does it for the community and, and I've mentioned this before a little bit earlier when we were doing the ordering process and everything like that like this is something that you really typically don't find throughout Manhattan which is people who are more focused on their neighborhoods and everything like that so there's a there's a huge social imp implication here that we definitely encourage people to like at least come and like you know support and you know show them some love while they're here and don't forget to tip from everything I saw just hanging out around there I felt like the burger is almost secondary to the experience of going up and ordering and chatting with people in the community. Like that's really where this sets itself apart. It's really not about the burger. You know, again, you get a burger from pretty much anywhere in New York. You know, but when it comes down to this, like it's really about getting the feel of Harlem. Like even when we were standing in line, we were talking with somebody who was local to the area and said, hey, this is this is really what his lunch break is. All right, Evan, we are in front of Charles Pan Fried Chicken, and you told me that this was a, a unique spot to visit in Harlem. Absolutely. See, the best part about this is, like, I remember when I was young and hanging in the kitchen and my grandmother was frying chicken, it was always pan fried chicken. What I loved about it is that you always got those, like, crispy, like, little sections that were just, like, hitting the bottom of the pan. Doing thighs, we doing legs. What are you, what are you recommending? Well, I'm a fan man myself. All right, see me too. Two drums, two thighs. We need to do uh, some mac and cheese and some candy yams. This is a lot of food. You know, we did run into Charles, the owner, the man, the myth, the legend. Unfortunately, I didn't tell them we were coming and he was on his way out. So he said a word or two on camera. 
So we didn't get that big interview, but we're gonna we're gonna pay them homage. We're gonna give them some respect by eating a ton of this on camera. Now, this isn't really the best food to eat outside. This isn't really street food. Yeah, it's not like a slice of pizza where you just take it, you fold it, and you just kind of walk and go. Like the best part about like having fried chicken and soul food is the fact that you get to sit down and like really enjoy it and spend time with those that you care about. It's definitely not something that you're just eating out of a container. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do soul food uh, COVID nineteen style outside here. <laughs> we're in front of uh, St. Aloysius Church. Uh, this is the church that I grew up going to. Uh, I used to come here every Sunday with my grandmother for services. So uh, I figured, you know what, if we're gonna have you know fried chicken and memory of my grandmother uh, and all the stuff that she used to do for me, we're gonna go ahead and just have it in front of where she used to come to with me every Sunday. That, my friends, is what you call fried goodness. Evan insisted I go first. I have not had fried chicken in Harlem since we were at Amy Ruth's doing chicken and waffles. This is different. This is just a drumstick coming right out of the bucket. Perfect, let's try this. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's just so crispy. I see exactly what Evan was saying about the pan fried chicken, how you just get a better flavor out of it. And clearly, you know, Charles is a legend for a reason. Excellent. Just just in one bite, I could tell how good this fried chicken is. Really happy Evan took me here. As usual, Evan, another good choice. Honestly, like this is just bringing me back some memories already just by smelling it. And <laughs> Oh yeah, this is perfectly done. Like, it's crispy, it's juicy, it's full of flavor. And like, even when I bite into it, like it's, it literally brings me back to my childhood. Like I, I can't think of a more perfect piece of chicken right now. Baked mac and cheese here. All right, side dishes, what it's all about. So much flavor, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I think I like the mac and cheese as much as I like the fried chicken, and I was not expecting to say that. Mm-hmm. Definitely some of the best mac and cheese I've had in a long time. Not just saying that. Mm. I know, uh, Evan's afraid I'm gonna finish this literally right now. All right, so. Got a, little, got a little candy yams here, and uh, my grandmother always told me, like, you can always tell how good somebody's soul food is by their candy yams. So, let's see what we got here. Solid. Honestly, not overly sweet, because I know some people like to put a little bit too much sugar in there. Very buttery. It, it honestly reminds me of just like a slightly sweetened mashed, like mashed sweet potato. This is excellent, probably one of my favorite dishes that I've had in a very long time from a restaurant. Evan likes the shirt. If you guys are interested in purchasing a New York Strong shirt and supporting his channel, see the link right down below. We keep a small proceed. Helps us fund the things we do on this channel, guys. Appreciate it. Honestly, it tastes homemade to me. Like that's how I would describe it. Like, I feel like this is homemade. At our final stop, and I will admit that Lily's was my choice for a really cool reason. So obviously, uh, John has talked about his culture before, but he's Jewish. I'm pretty obviously black. So we were trying to figure a way in which we could bring everything together to solidify our friendship. So with that, we discovered that there was rugula made by a black man in Harlem. So we were just like, how much more perfect could this be? So with that said, we bring you to Lily's Bakery. Hey, how's it? Oh, hey. Oh. Not bad, just here for some rugula. <laughs> How did you come to make rugula of all things to bake? Well, uh, 1962, I started baking at New York Hospital. And uh, I found a recipe in the newspaper. And I, you know, I, I got adjusted to where I thought it would be, it should be. And it came out this way, my blessing. Good, pure ingredients. Right? Okay. And we try to, you know, put a lot, a lot of love in it. Jewish people come in here, are they very impressed by how it tastes, like the quality of it? Like, I'm, I'm so excited to try this. And like they say, they always say, better than grandmother. Better than grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got to try this. All right, we're trying this. 
I like it. We're like twins here. <laughs> All right, I've got the chocolate rugelach. He's got the apricot. As Lily said, Jewish people were telling him it's better than how their grandma did it. So I want I want to see if it lives up to that All that right. hype right there. I mean, I don't have a grandma that's done this before, so uh... <laughs> I'll give you my opinion on it. All right, All right, fair enough. Let's try this. Let's do it. Here we go. All right. Oh man, that's good. Mm -hmm. I've had arugula before. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. It's so fresh. It's really light, and it's got like a nice crispness to it with a little bit of tenderness on the inside. It's it's honestly the ultimate pastry right now. It's really good. It's like very a word to describe. It, it's very crumbly. Like you eat it, just crumbs up in your mouth. Excellent flavor. I love the chocolate. I would say it's a bit different. I can't put my finger on it, but it's a little different than what I'm used to normally eating arugula. But different isn't bad here. This is still really good. And I think it's just so unique to have him doing rugula, not being Jewish, and that being his staple, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's something that's very New York. Oh, I agree. Especially with the culinary history that we have here. Oh yeah, you gotta come up and you gotta try this. Mm-hmm, mm. These places are excellent compliments to things that you're already doing in Harlem. So for example, if you're going to the Schomburg like we talked about in the last video, definitely make sure you're stopping off for lunch and grabbing some pan fried chicken. If you are in the neighborhood and you're grabbing dinner and you want something sweet to end it, definitely grab some arugula. If you're just walking through Harlem and you want something that's like a quick bite that it's just gonna hit the spot, make sure you stop by Moe's. So we, we wanted to make sure that we were just highlighting some of the really awesome things that are designed to complete your visit to Harlem. Guys, we are talking about making a part two, part three, part four Harlem food series. If you have places that we should check out, leave it in the comments. We want to know. Special thanks to Evan. He did a great job. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, I love making these videos. Till next time. What is this fly around me? It loves you, man. <laughs> it's like, who hasn't showered in a week? This guy. Dude, I have. That's the problem.